Now before moving to method of sections, we are going to cover two very small but very crucial concepts that will help you in solving numericals. The first concept is concept of zero force members. Okay, you can use these concepts in method of joint mainly. Okay, but it's not like that that in method of section they cannot be applied. But when you are using method of joint, then these uh, uh, you know concepts and these tips are going to help you. What I'm about to share. So zero force member. Now what exactly is a zero force member? Have a look at this truss here. Consider the point D. At this point, BD is perpendicular to AC. Now let's draw the free body diagram of point D. If I do that, there will be a force AD, a force DC and a force BD, right? And it is perpendicular like this. If I apply the concept of static equilibrium and I'm just doing summation FY here, summation FY, that should be zero. And there is only one force acting along y direction that is TBD. What does it tell me? That TBD has to be zero. Correct. Whenever in a truss you have one link, one member connecting perpendicular to two other links and at that point no external load is acting, then that member is said to be zero force member. Since there is no external force acting at this point D, so this member became zero force member. If suppose there was a load acting at this point D, since I have told you that external loads can act. In the first example, it was acting at the top point. It may act somewhere else also. So if a load is acting, let's say here, a load of 100 Newton is acting at point D. Then if you apply summation Fy, is equal to 0. So you will be having TBD as well as 100. So TBD will become equal to 100. TBD will not be 0. But when you have such a setting where you have one member perpendicular to two other members, two other collinear members like this, then and no external load or force is acting at that point, then that member is said to be zero force member. So no force is present in that member. Effectively, this is of no use having BD is of no use when we are considering the force when we are doing the force calculation because force in this is effectively zero so whenever you have a problem whenever you have a problem on trust your first objective should be to eliminate the zero force members if the problem you are not directly able to reach at the point at the unknown force then try to look for zero force members generally there are not many zero force members but if the question is complex, there will definitely be some zero force members. Even gate can directly ask you or any exam can directly ask you. It can give you trust and it can ask you to identify the zero force members. Their names will be given in the option. So doing this you can see has greatly simplified the trust for us. It's just a simple triangle now. And it will even more simplify the trust when it will be bigger in size. All right. There's one more trick here in uh, zero force members suppose let's take this case only it is not bd is not meeting at right angle bd is meeting it at some other angle other than 90 degrees now is bd a zero force member still in this case let's have a look suppose this is a certain angle theta which bd is making with ac same setting we have now let's apply summation Fy is equal to 0. What will you have? TBD sin theta is equal to 0. Now theta is obviously not 0. So this is a finite number which means that TBD has to be 0. So again TBD is a 0 force member and it will be 0 force member. It does not have to be always perpendicular to such collinear members. When some link, listen to this line carefully, when some link or some member of a truss is connecting to two collinear members and no external force is acting, then that link which is connecting to the collinear members will be zero force member whether it makes 90 degree or 9 degree. 
You got that? So irrespective of what angle BD makes, if BD or any member is connecting further to any two links, two members which are collinear like AD and DC are collinear here, right? Now irrespective of whether BD is like this or like this or like this, it will always be a zero force member if no external force is acting at this point. Fascinating idea, right? It will greatly simplify the problem. Many students who, you know, just go through the concept of zero force member superficially skip this concept that it can be connected at some angle as well. So when such questions are framed, numericals are framed, when specifically zero force member is asked, then they run into trouble. There is one more specific case of zero force member. Let me show that to you as well. Suppose you have a truss like this. We have a connection here, a support here, two supports we have here. This is A, this is B, C, D and E. All right. Do you think there is any zero force member in this setting? You will be searching for some link which is connecting to two collinear links, right? You won't be able to find that in this case. But this is one more situation where zero force members can be detected. Zero force member can be detected. If you look at this joint here, what do you see? Two members are coming together to join and no external load or force is present. Consider this for your FBD, this point for your FBD. So this will be TAB, let's say this angle is theta, this will be TAD, this angle is theta, right? Apply summation fx and summation fy0. If you do summation fy is equal to 0, what do you get? TAB sin theta is equal to 0, right? Theta is obviously finite value which will give you TAB is equal to 0. And if TAB is 0, then TAD has to be 0. How will it get balanced? Or those of you who don't get it, apply summation fx is equal to 0. What you will get? TAD plus TAB cos theta is equal to 0. Now since TAB is equal to 0, TAD will also become 0. So see, you have discovered not one, but two zero force members. So basically this truss in this whole truss, this whole part is of no use. Only this much is the actual truss. This part here is of no use. It's a zero force members. Two members are zero force members. So although this is something that you can figure out, even if you go by the process of joint analysis, you will figure this out. But why waste time there, right? And those of you who don't know this concept, they will start getting confused at how these forces are coming zero. Maybe I'm missing something. You are not missing something. This is the concept of zero force members. But suppose in the same joint, a force starts to act. A force starts to act or load is acting at this point. Then things may change. Then you apply summation fx0, summation fy0. You will get certain values, right? But if this force acts, let's say in this direction, then again there is one zero force member because this force and AD are collinear, right? If AB is present, suppose this is the direction of force. Now you write summation FY0, what you will get? Same value, up to this point you will get the same value that nothing is present to balance TAB sine theta. So TAB will be a zero force component if situation is like this, right? You don't have to learn this case. I'm just telling you that how depending upon the direction of force or the presence of force, any joint can turn into a zero force member and it can, uh, you know, uh, means when no force was acting, both of them were zero force members, correct? When force is acting downward, both of them became normal members. When the angle of force became like this, AB become the zero force member, right? So zero force member is a very interesting thing to watch and analyze. You won't be having a lot of questions on this, but if you have understood this concept, it will definitely help you in simplifying the problems on trusses. Now let's solve this question. This question was asked in gate 2020, mechanical engineering set one. Okay. 
द क्वेश्चन से इज दैट द मेम्बर्स कैरिंग जीरो फोर्स दैट इज जीरो फोर्स मेम्बर्स इन द ट्रस शोन इन द फिगर दिस इज द फिगर अ ट्रस हैज बीन शोन द मेम्बर्स विच आर जीरो फोर्स मेम्बर्स इन दिस ट्रस आर टू बी डिटर्माइंड फॉर एनी लोड पी ग्रेटर देन जीरो हेयर इज पी यू कैन सी दैट देर इज इज अ लोड पी एक्टिंग एंड दैट पी लोड विच इज एक्टिंग एट पॉइंट सी इज ग्रेटर देन जीरो विद नो एप्रिशिएबल डिफॉर्मेशन ऑफ द ट्रस्ट दैट इज विद नो एप्रिशिएबल चेंज इन एंगल्स बिटवीन द मेम्बर्स आर विच ऑफ दिस सो द क्वेश्चन लैंग्वेज ऑनेस्टली इज नॉट अ वेरी राइटली एंड वेरी इजिली फॉर्म्ड लैंग्वेज इट्स अ कॉम्प्लिकेटेड स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ सेंटेंस नाउ इन दिस क्वेश्चन इट्स वेरी फनी दैट वाई गेट इज ट्राइंग टू एक्सप्लेन एवरी थिंग इन द क्वेश्चन what i mean to say is that it has mentioned the members carrying zero force so it clearly means that it is talking about zero force members but in the bracket it has written zero force members okay fine no problem then it says that for any load p greater than 0 with no appreciable deformation of the truss this basically means that there is no change in angle and all the angles and all the lengths which are shown in the figure are not changing either in their length nor in their orientation but again in the bracket it has explained that with no appreciable change in angle between the members okay so in general you should be very careful that gate is not going to explain these things to you every time here it has mentioned that here it has explained you that why it uh, you know what is the benefit of knowing that there is no appreciable uh, appreciable deformation of the truss right what is the benefit that there will be no change in the angle no appreciable change in the angle all these angles whatever you have you are going to calculate from the geometry are going to remain same even after applying this load p right but it will not be mentioned this thing in the bracket will not be mentioned every time in the question so you should be aware of this concept that whenever there is no appreciable deformation of the truss means there there is no change in angle of uh, you know between the members after applying the load okay now coming to the question the question says that you have to tell that which members are carrying zero force or which members are zero force members this is the truss shown to you okay now it has given you four options and trust me whenever such questions are asked and obviously gate will ask give you these options for such questions options framed will be tricky even if you make a slightest mistake there will be an option present for you how let me explain that to you some students who are in very hurry they don't have time because maybe they need to finish the gate in less than 3 hours so what they do is they don't read the question or they don't look at the diagram properly trust me even some good students make this mistake they are in very hurry to solve next question and not the current one and they miss small details in the diagram specifically and even if you think that you won't do that mistake there are good chances that you will do those mistakes right so you need to carefully look at whatever diagram has been given to you in this diagram what students do they directly look at what are the zero force members they can visually locate in the diagram which is good which is fine they should do that they look at the diagram directly and they locate that okay this link fb is perpendicular to ab as well as bc right b is the point where link ab and bc are connecting and at that point you have fb which is joining at that point and i have told you that if this is the setup irrespective of the angle between a fb and uh, the other members fb is going to be a zero force members right because there is no force acting here if there was a force acting here then fb would not have been zero force members but in such a scenario i have taught you clearly that fb is going to be a zero force members right so they directly look at it that right fb is a zero force member similarly dh is also a zero force member right because similar thing what is happening here same is happening here right so they directly look at it and they say yes we have located two zero force members directly and there is also option bf and dh so this is the correct option they take it they move on and they lose their marks but if you observe the diagram carefully you will notice that gc is also a zero force member right it does not have to connect only from the top in this case 
at A, B and B, C, F, B is connecting from the top, right? But it can connect from the bottom as well, just like G, C is connecting. This is F, G, this is G, H and from the bottom G, C is connecting, right? And since there is no load acting at point G, there is no load acting at point G. Therefore, G, C is also going to be a zero force member, just like B, F and B, H. Right or not? Because where they are joining the other two links, there is no force acting at that point. At point B also there is no force acting. At point D also no force acting. At point G also no force acting. So B, F, B, H as well as G, C is a zero force member. So some of the students who are able to see this, they know that B can be a better option than A and they pick B and then, then they move on to the next question and again they lose their marks. Why? Any other member, if you try to visually locate, definitely you will not be able to locate it. Definitely just by visual observation, you can locate FB, GC and HD as zero force members. But does it mean that only these three are zero force members? No. The way you need to approach such questions is step number one, is visually observe it, visually observe the zero force members. And second is that if you notice something irregular and uncommon in such questions, try to make FBD, try to make FBD, free body diagram. Now you may think that what unusual thing uh, we are noticing here, everything looks just fine like a regular truss, but no, if you look at point E, you will realize that there is a support, there is a roller support at point E, which is inclined at 45 degree. Now, what was the need of it? You may think that generally whenever we make such trusses or any such diagrams, the reaction is not inclined, the wall is not inclined at 45 degree. The wall or the support is just simple horizontal, just like it is at point A, right? But here you see it is inclined at 45 degree. Should it make some difference? Definitely it will make some difference. How? Let's do one thing. Let's make the free body diagram considering this whole truss to be a single unit. If you recall, I have already told you this in the method of joint that whenever you are trying to find out the unknown reactions from these external supports, not from the internal, from the external supports like at A, it has a hinge support, right? There is a hinge at point A. Similarly, at point E, there is a roller support. It is not a hinge, right? I have told you this in strength of materials as well as in engineering mechanics. That E is not here. E is not a hinge support. It's a roller support, right? So hinge support and roller support, if you want to find out the value of unknown reaction, you need to draw the free body diagram considering this whole truss as a single body. Consider that there are no such different members linked together. Rather, it is just like one complete object, one complete object like this, right? And this is not something that I'm telling you for the first time. I have already told this to you in the basics of trusses, right? The step one. In that case, we consider whole trust to be a single unit and then we find out the unknown reactions the unknown reactions from the supports here a and e are two supports again as we have already covered in the basics of strength of materials and mechanics that hinge develop a particular type of unknown reaction one is going to be vertical one is going to be horizontal and roller support develop a particular type of reaction right these things we already know what is the type of reaction generated by roller support? That is what I am interested in right now. Why? Because this end is very regular, just like a regular hinge, right? But this one is inclined. So E is the point where I am interested that what effect is this 45 degree angle is going to make in the whole analysis, right? So I want to know the direction of unknown reaction at E. Since it is inclined at 45 degree and it is a roller support, right? So you can clearly see that since it is roller support, it can roll freely in this direction, right? In this direction, it can roll freely. There is no constraint in rolling in this direction. And again, referring to the basics of strength of materials, since it is free to move in this direction, there will be no restraint and there will be no reaction generated in this direction. We already know this for roller support. 
but it cannot move in this direction it cannot move perpendicular to this surface right so reaction generated by the roller is going to be perpendicular to the surface this is the surface at 45 degree and perpendicular to the, this surface means perpendicular to this surface means in this direction right this is the direction of unknown reaction at e okay now let's have a look at one more aspect of geometry here dh how much how much is dh it is one meter right de is also one meter and these are at 90 degree perpendicular to each other hd is perpendicular to de what does it tell you it tells you that in this right triangle hde where this is one meter this is also one meter this angle and this angle how much will be these angles 45 degrees right basics of geometry so this angle is 45 degree now you look at this straight line here in this straight line here this angle is 45 this much this angle is given as 45 how much should be this angle how much should be this angle this angle has to be 90 degree right because this complete angle has to be 180 45 and 45 90 so this angle left should be equal to 90 degree right or not so the link eh this link eh is basically perpendicular to the support to this support right this is perpendicular also the reaction re is perpendicular to the support because in the case of roller support i have already told you that reaction is generated normal to the surface of support so this is 90 this is 90 what does it tell you it directly tells you that re the reaction from e is going to be directed along he basically this link he is collinear with the line of action of re right or not now recall that when i was teaching you zero force members i also told you one more condition of zero force members other than the perpendicular case this case when there are two members which are coming together to join at a point and in such case if any external force is acting collinear to any of the member like in this case external force re is acting collinear to he in that case other member de is going to be zero force members we have already done the calculation so i am not here going to apply summation fx0 summation fy0 to prove that since i have already taught you that so in this case the reaction re which is totally collinear with he will result into force in de as zero making de as a zero force member if this reaction at e was inclined totally along de suppose hypothetically this reaction at e was let's say totally inclined in this direction suppose if this was the case then he would have been the zero force member right this is something that i have taught you already so in this case de is also a zero force member now look at the options there is only one option c where de is also given as a zero force member c is the correct option right but if you look closely one more member cd is also given as zero force member in option c and which is very much logical if you look at this joint d at this joint d you apply summation fx is equal to zero what you will get force in cd is equal to force in de right and since force in de is zero so force in cd will also be zero so at this point whatever will the will be the force at de same will be the force at cd right since force at de is zero so force at cd will also be zero so for this question the correct option is option c you see it was such a simple question but in the pressure of exam how you will be able to answer this correctly if you read the diagram you understand the diagram correctly you don't miss any small details if any student would have missed this uh, funda that this was inclined at 45 degree definitely he would have ticked option b and he would not have gotten marks so it is very important to read the question and the diagram given carefully only then you can expect to have a good accuracy